starting with a bang. Can I get everyone to grab your last bits of kai and then come and grab a seat? Um, because awkwardly, the live stream is going to start really, really soon. And it's going to be funny if no one's on stage. Kia ora let's go, let's go, now. Aka tangi tangi taku koro koro he tau maha ki runga e aku wai wai tēnei au e tūana a haramai. E ika wai rea te ana tapu, ka hura tangata uta me tūraki atu ki tangata atai. Ka hura tangata atai me tūraki atu ki tangata auta. Pēra i te kōrepe nui te kōrepe roa te wāhi awa te toto i awa. Whakamautama i te ara, whakamautama i te ara. Ko tū koronga. Tama i ara hia te ara. Kauraka atu tama e u hia tu ko atu tama ke aputa i wahu i te tāwhangawhanga. He puta ngā āriki nō rongo ki te ata tauira mai e, mai e. Mai e te tipua, mai e te tāwhitoa. I hara mai nā koe i whe. I hara mai koe i whakaoti nuku. I hara mai koe i whakaoti rangi. Ko tō manawa, ko tōku manawa. Ko tāne kā iri hia whano, whano, hara mai te toki, Haumie, huie, taikie. Ko te mea tuetahi me wehi ki te atua, te timatanga me te whakamutunga o ngā mea katoa, te whenue takoto nei, tō tātou whare, a manga ko tuku tuku e tū nei, tēnei rā te mihi. Ki a rātou ko wehi atu ki te pō, ki te pō uriuri, te pō tango tango, te pō i oti atu, ngā mate ki waenginui a koutou, ki waenginui a mātou, tēnei te wā kā mihi ki a rātou. Tukuno atu ki tērā tahu o te ārai, a ka mihi, ka tangi, ka tangi, ka mihi. A ka hoki wairu atu a hau ki a koutou, a ngā manuhiri ku tai mai i tēnei pō, tēnei rā te mihi, ngā whānau, ngā hoa rangatira o ngā kaimahi, tēnei rā te mihi. E ngā mana, e ngā reo, e ngā karanga maha, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, nau mai hara mai, welcome to the... Uh, Kōkiri Māori Business Accelerator Showcase Event 2021. I'm Aubrey Takanawa, the Program Director for this year's cohort, and I uh, just want to extend a warm mihi to all of you. Um, for, the f for the last 14 weeks, we have had seven uh, inspiring, um, aspiring Māori-led startups that have come in from all over Aotearoa, from all different industries, to take an idea, a seed, and try and turn it into a viable, um, investable, scalable uh, business venture that they can take uh, out to the globe. Uh, when we bring these teams into program, we have no idea of where they might land. It's too, there's too many variables involved uh, that could affect their trajectory as a startup. Uh, what we do know is we want to help them, and we want to help them accelerate through that journey. So. Our job is to not to determine the pathway that they will take, but rather to facilitate an accelerated journey of discovery. Part of that is about discovery of themselves. It's a personal development journey of themselves as human beings, but also uh, a business entrepreneurial journey to understand what it takes to start up a successful, a successful business. 
And we do this trusting that the teams uh, will find a pathway that makes sense for them. And we do that because in our view at Ahi Komako is that starting a business is not easy, but it's the ultimate expression of what we call tino rangatiratanga in, in te ao Māori. And when you translate the deep meaning of those words, what it really means is um, the acceptance of responsibility, ultimate responsibility as a chief. That's actually what it means. So when you, when you go out and you start up a business, you're saying to the world, uh, I am the, the master of my destiny, I am the captain of my ship. And not only am I that, but I'm also making opportunities for those people around me. So in our view, it's a really important thing to be doing if you really want to exercise your tino ranga tiratanga. So how that translates into what we do, first of all, we invest in people first. The business comes second, but we invest in people first. And we do that by building their capability as humans and by building their capability as a resilient startup founder. Second thing we do is provide tools and frameworks so that they have the tools to actually address what they're doing. And thirdly, we facilitate connections with the wider startup ecosystem. So these three things put together is what helps accelerate the business along their journey. And in terms of measures of success for us, it's, it's not necessarily how much that company is going to be worth when it leaves this place. But what we want to know is, did we actually accelerate them through that journey? Did we provide them the tools that they needed? And uh, is that business thinking and acting in business in a way that adequately reflects the best of Te Ao Māori values and principles? So by those measures alone, we've actually had a really good year. And uh, when you hear the pictures tonight, what I want you all to think about is that the teams came in and come coming in, they just had an idea at the start 14 weeks ago, just an idea. So when you see the pictures tonight, I want you to remember that. And you can see the growth in the teams and the understanding of business. And hopefully they'll be able to express to you um, the deepness of their thoughts as, as startup founders. On behalf of Ahi Komako and Te, uh, te Wānanga Aotearoa, we are, we are very proud of how far the startups have gone in the last 14 weeks. And in reflection on this year's program, um, we want to acknowledge the teams for the efforts, but we also want to acknowledge your families uh, for putting up with you while you went through this journey. Um, we also want to acknowledge the number of beards that were growing during program. And uh, one of the startup founders, John Taimana, I think he's still trying to catch up with the, with the rest, but good on you. Um, and I also want to acknowledge that they didn't get here alone. So there were people that have, have come in, whether they be coaches or advisors or sponsors um, or support people or guest speakers, all of you have contributed to, to what you will see tonight. So um, there, there are two people I want to call out. The first is uh, Talia Musson uh, for being a bit, bit emotional, but an absolute backbone for this program and doing all of the, the hard work in the background. And the other person is Amy Burness for, for her meticulous planning and getting this uh, event together. So thank you, Amy. Thank you, Talia. And to all of you that have contributed, you've had hands in this, uh, in this program, um, I want you to all put your hands together and give yourselves a huge pucky pucky for, for a job well done this year. Thank you. Um, at this stage, um, I'm going to invite up Hopefully they're ready by now, but we have a kapahaka ropu um, to come and entertain you for a little bit before we get started. And uh, I really hope you enjoy tonight's pitches, and um, you, you should feel proud about the, the progress that these teams have made. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā rā tātou koutou. Oh, one more thing is, um, can you all put your cell phones on mute before we start? And in, in the event of an evacuation, um, we will all go out these doors here and out to the main foyer. We'll have um, some fire wardens to, to guide you to, to where you need to be. Cool. All right. We may need to stall a bit, so um, I'm going to introduce you to um, Ian Musson, who's the MC, and he's going to stall for you until our kapahaka rōpū is ready. <laughs>
Kia ora mai tato. Um, ko Ian Musson talking. So my name's Ian Musson. For some reason, Orbs asked me to be your MC tonight. Um, part of me's thinking is that budget was at a limit, so they needed someone who lived down the road. So you'll get to know that I don't mind the sound of my own voice. And so what Aubrey's so kindly done is made notes for me to make sure that I follow a schedule. So, but I want to, before our kapa haka, group, kapa haka group, before our kapa haka group comes on, I want to echo some of the sentiments of Aubrey and I guess share some of the whakapapa you might say of Kokiri and how we got to where we are. And much of it refers to what Orbs just said in terms of a number of years ago, there was this discussion going on around, actually, we don't have rooms like this where there's a lot of Māori present, where they're pitching on stage, where they're talking about their ambitions and their opportunities that are ahead of them. But I'm like, but I know a bunch of brown folk who have some really cool ideas and have some really cool skills. So why don't we find them in these environments? Now, long story short, how we got there was this notion of actually sometimes the, the measures of success or the determinants of what success looks like for a startup business don't necessarily reflect our cultural values. And so Aubrey mentioned that sometimes the journey isn't to get an exit to make a lot of money, but to grow as individuals. And I think we're really special to be in a place where we have an environment where each of our whānau are on a similar journey, going through a similar program as such, but doing it for very different reasons. Um, and so to what Aubrey was saying prior is you'll see the outcomes to date of where many of our teams have come to. And then reflecting what he said around, I guess, us here as a whānau is that you're all part of that journey for our people here. Now, I'm also super mindful that there's a little gap there, so they'll keep looking at me to see if they're ready to go, is that the reason that our whānau get to succeed as they are is because of all of you, for all the whānau, for all the sacrifices that go on. And I'm mindful of the only journey that I've been on in terms of the people at home who keep the fires burning to allow us to do these extravagant things like this. And so a big acknowledgement for us all, um, for you all, not us, hold on, I'm going to bring myself into that, um, for actually bringing our whānau here today. Um, before we get into our, our haka ropu, keep looking like, oh, I hope that hustle, eh? <laughs> is, um, is part of my role tonight is as your MC or your navigator, you might suggest, but also what I'd consider to be your chief cheerleader. Okay? Now, people are getting up on stage here, and it, it, it can be quite nerve wracking. And for many of our whānau today, they were pretty chill until they had their practice run. They stood up here, and there was no one there, and they realized actually people are going to be looking at me. And there's nothing I can really hide. And so while my job is to guide us through this evening, your job is to make them feel great. Okay? And so we're going to practice what that's like. Now, I don't want none of this just a little tap, 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 tap. I want to hear some noise, okay? Because they're going to come in, they're going to just kill it on stage, and then you're just going to blow them away by just probably freaking them out, to be fair, by just cheering for them, okay? So can we do that? Now, I don't want to be louder than you, but I can be. But my challenge is for you to be louder than I am, okay? Go boy. Okay, so I'm going to count us down. Three, two, one. And then we're going to see what we can do, okay? Look ready. Three, two, one. <laughs> so, so, it's a good, good start. But I saw a few of you just sitting there, like, not quite impressed enough yet, okay? So, just think about it. 14 weeks, they've been like just on this grind, okay? So how would you feel after 14 weeks if someone comes to you like, yeah, it's all right. Okay, so we're going to try that again. I'll give you an extra second. I'll count down from four to get you prepped, okay? And I want to hear some noise. Come on. Okay, four, three, two, one. <laughs> so, so, thank you. No. Makes me feel good as well as anything. I'll double check behind this hidden curtain um, if we have a ropu there. How long do you reckon? Okay. So, as we do, what we thought we might do is we're going to play a video for you. So, can we um, prompt the Callahan video? And then hopefully by that time, they're going to be down. So, as an acknowledgement, supporters from day one have been Callahan Innovation and MB. And so, a little introduction to who they are, if you're not too aware of them, to kind of kick off, kickstart our evening. Go away. The 
world is undergoing its fourth industrial revolution. And over the next 10 or 20 years, the way we live, work and do business will be vastly different. For New Zealand to thrive, we must seize the new opportunities this technological change offers. Callaghan Innovation is here to help make that happen. We are New Zealand's innovation agency. We activate innovation and we help businesses to grow faster for a better New Zealand. Our namesake, the visionary New Zealand scientist who Paul Callaghan, said that our country's brilliance comes from the weird stuff that others don't think to exploit. He said that 100 inspired New Zealand entrepreneurs can turn this country around. So we partner with ambitious businesses of all sizes to provide innovation and research and development services to suit their stage of growth. We have more than 200 of New Zealand's leading scientists and engineers dedicated to solving tough technical problems for our customers. We provide world-class advice and events and supply skills and capability development programs. We enable our customers to innovate with grants co-funding for R&D activities. And as a government agency, we actively connect people, opportunities and networks. We enhance the operation of New Zealand's innovation ecosystem for the benefit of all of us, helping to make Aotearoa a place where, in Sir Paul's words, talent wants to live. The Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment is committed to seeing New Zealand become an even more successful country. We want New Zealand to be more productive and internationally competitive with a thriving business sector, telecommunications that better connect us to the world and a national resource base that reflects how we value our natural environment. Our ambition is to see more New Zealanders in higher paid work for this country to have the best regulatory systems, more affordable housing, higher living standards, stimulating cities, and an immigration system that enables greater access to the skilled people, ideas, and investment opportunities we need to grow our economy. MB encourages science and innovation that supports business growth and changes New Zealand for the better. Our goals include safer workplaces and realising more value from government by transforming how the public sector procures. MB, working with our Crown Entity partners and other government agencies, local government, businesses, industry, sector, union and employer groups, consumer groups, Māori leaders and our scientific communities to improve household income growth and New Zealand's economic well-being. MB, growing New Zealand for all. Cool, thank you for that, whānau. Um, you can't clap if you like, there's a few of them in the room. And we appreciate the money they give us. So, so what I also forgot to mention is that tonight is the, um, where are the whānau in the room? Looking for our MB and our Callaghan whānau to um, the recommitment ceremony to give us more putia for 2022, 2023 and beyond. Um, so final, our haka group is here, they're ready to go. And what I'm suggesting is the build up is the anticipation that I intended to do. So kind of get them ready. So we're gonna welcome them on stage. And as long as I, and then Orbs and I are gonna move some stuff, they're gonna come on stage, they're gonna blow us away. We're gonna practice our chairs, okay? When they come on and when they leave as well. So don't just wait to be entertained, entertain them and get the riff going, okay? Kaboy. So I'm gonna, I kind of get scared when I come over here. I was like, am I going to open it and no one's going to be there? Oh, yes. <laughs> so, welcome, Fano. Do you just want the mic, bro, to introduce yourselves? No, okay.
I just can keep the cheers going if you'd like. <laughs> but this is where it gets even more awkward, bro. Because I'm going to come up to you and ask you questions. <laughs> so, so, bro, so I'm going to say that for the right price, people can book you, right? How do they get in contact with you, bro? I'm a board member as well, and I don't know our email address. <laughs> Facebook, yeah, Te Waiora, on Facebook. Yeah, Te Waiora on Te Facebook. Te Waiora or Waikato on Facebook. All the social channels, no doubt, I'm sure. Instagram, Tinder. Tinder, oh, kia ora! <laughs> Sweet, uh, yeah. umo te paki paki whanau for our bro walking off stage. And finally, there's some more kai upstairs for you fellas too. So head on up and have a kai. So I was going to sing tonight. That's not going to happen anymore. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't, I promise. I was actually. But we're going to kick into it now and actually get to what you're here for. So I've got a bunch of notes I'm going to work through. So because tonight couldn't be possible without the support of our whanau, and I mean that by the people here, but also from the organisations that support to allow this to happen. So I'm going to bring up, and I'm going to do this verbatim, that Spark continues to be a major supporter of Kōkiri, being a principal sponsor from day one. Now, from day one, so this is the third iteration to give you an idea, whanau, and so they've been here with us since day one. I've got in here now as a pause to clap. <laughs> So, so far, so good. <laughs> Look to my boss. So, Spark now continue to partner with Te Wānunga Wāotero to build the bridge between the world of technology and Te Ao Māori with programs such as Kōkiri and the Digital Marae Kaitiaki program that supports Marae to implement digital infrastructure, enabling them to participate more fully in the 21st century. So, we've got a special thanks to Ricky Hollings um, for all your support, bro, to our Kōkiri whānau over these last few years and the many more to come. <laughs> he got, I got a wink, I got a wink. So who might paki paki whanau for our spark whanau? And then through the magic, we're going to push a video. Kamua, Kamuri, Shichiro Kiruma. Te roto i ngā whetū, ngā kōrero mo te ao o nehe, me te ao o a pōpō. Ka irunga rā ngā tūpuna, ngā pū maharatanga me ngā wheakotanga o mua e arahi ana i a tāta. Ka i te kite rā nei koe, ka i te taha i a matariki. E whakanui ai i te mātahi o te tau. Me whai whakaaro ki o wheakotanga o mua, tai atu ki era e arahi tonu nei i a koe ki ngā rā o a pōpō. Whakapua ki hea ngā kōrero mō rātau, mō u hoki, kia tīra marama te rangi mō matariki. Sweet, you clap again. It just reminds me too to get back on stage and it kind of eases the awkwardness of me walking up when it's silent. So, finally we're going to get into the gritty parts of it now. So our very first team this evening features a number of familiar and beautiful faces. They are each experts in well-being and I really hope they're sitting out there right now and are now applying their craft towards developing a digital platform that enables organisations to more appropriately and more accurately support the well-being of kaimahi. All while, or all the while, embracing a uniquely indigenous and holistic well-being approach. So, homaiti paki paki for the Rangai Wellbeing Collective. Kia ora, kutui ana o hi ahau, no Nati Pukinga, nai te rangi, te arawa, no Nati Pakia ahau. And I am the hustler. What's the problem? There is no one tool that captures and tracks the state of well-being in an organisation. Organisations include businesses, councils, iwi, NGOs. They don't know where to start or 
don't know how to measure the health and well-being and productivity of their kaimahi. So our, our aim is to stop them buying blessing and give them a snapshot of their current needs. And also it's a great time because businesses are aware of well-being. It's come to the forefront of many businesses and many communities. And so there's an opportunity for leadership buy-in. But most importantly, it's the right thing and it's the right time. Tēnā tātou katoa, ko pōa mui au a piripi a hau, nō taranaki me tainui um, a hau, and I am the boss. We're bringing the data to wellbeing to maximise organisations' return on investment for their kaimahi. Kia ora, ko Tim Mertens, takonga, nō o te tahi a hau, um, ko uh, Nga Te Pākia a hau, and I am as according to these guys, the geek of the group. <laughs> <laughs> Who is our customer? I mean, it's it's pretty much any business that's looking to support the well-being of their staff and to do to do that from a place of knowledge and a place of data to understand how to best implement a positive well-being strategy within their business. Um, but we do have a core group of 300 businesses uh, as part of our well-being collective. My name's Donna Pokere Phillips. He uri no tainui tuwhere to Taranaki hoki ahau, and I am known as the strategist. So I'm here to talk about our core values, mataki. Mataki means looking out on the horizon, and we have a passion for looking out for our people, looking out to the future, and that's what Rangai stands for. The vision for Rangai is to disrupt and innovate the wellbeing space, not only for workplaces, but for communities and whānau from an Indigenous worldview. I've, I've had a really tough mental health journey. Um, I struggled for many, many years. And for me, I want to help other people get to the place where I am, where, where I'm thriving. Um, it's a difficult journey, but it's a possible journey. And being involved in a, in a kōpapa like this, where we can actually support other people and, and build them up is, is really, really gratifying. At Rangai, the Wellbeing Collective, we're incredibly passionate about wellbeing, and that's inclusive of whānau, communities, and workplaces. We love wellbeing and we love people. He tangata, he tangata, he tangata. Green one. I'm doing the green one. Okay, I don't have one. <laughs> Welcome to Rangai, the Wellbeing Collective. We are bringing the data to wellbeing to maximise return on investment for businesses. Our aim is to support the profitable growth of organisations by improving the health and wellbeing of the people in them and the communities that they're part of. Organisations, they don't know where to start. There's a legal requirements of the 2015 Health and Safety Act that clearly states that employees need to show a level of care to their employees. Also, we're in the midst of a pandemic, so we've got elevated levels of stress, anxiety, isolation and loneliness. And also there's greater business awareness, as we alluded to in the video, around wellbeing and therefore opportunities for greater leadership buy-in. And like we've said, not only is it the right thing, but it's also the right time to do it. This is a game changer. We're going to be using an indigenous model, Te Whare Tapawha, developed by Professor Mason Jury. It will provide organisations with a high level view, enable organisations to measure their return on investment and the wellbeing of their staff and provide customised recommendations 
in real time without the lag. It will look at sick leave, productivity, and retention. And just like when you go to the doctor and you get your temperature checked and they ask, how are you? That is what we're going to do with organisations, drawing data from payroll and HR systems, identifying loss of staffing costs. We're also going to look at staff wellbeing concerns, utilising surveys through the tool. It's a web-based platform. It's staff. It'll provide staff with individualised feedback and recommendations. It'll give insights into the current health and well-being of the organisation with a dashboard view and the ability to do deep dives. It'll also provide well-being leads with the data that they need in order to have leadership invest funds into well-being. And our pricing model, our pricing structure, uh, structure excuse me, will be a one-off setup fee and a yearly subscription. And this will be an affordable, scalable model. The next steps, well, as you've said, we've got a bridge to market already um, on the onset of uh, COVID last year. We kind of pulled together a group of wellbeing leads and practitioners, and currently they stand at 300 companies across Australia and Aotearoa. We've identified 40 companies who will be early collaborators to help us enhance and test and validate our product. And our market, our market opportunity, well, with New Zealand, we're looking at companies with 100 employees or more. And later, when we move to Australia, we'll look at companies with 200 employees or more. But we will also utilise the collective. With regards to competitors, what we are planning to do is more than any other competitor at this stage, and more than any other company. So we're definitely in the ball game with regards to looking at comparative prices within Australia and Aotearoa. This, along with the collective, gives us a hugely competitive advantage. Our roadmap, well, currently we're doing some wireframe testing with our early collaborators, looking to an MVP in February and launching into the New Zealand market mid-2022, with a vision later to scale to the Australian market and develop a mobile responsive web page. And this is where the magic happens. This is our team. 37 plus years expertise and experience in the wellbeing space, and we're award winning. Our ask is $500,000 that will be invested into tech expertise, project lead, marketing, administration, and further product development. Me hara takitoa, ititoa takitahi, engari, te toa takitini. My strength is not as an individual, but as a collective. Our goal is to become the number one well-being innovator and influencer. We have an incredible passion for people and for well-being. Kia ora, nā mihi nui, we are Rangai, the Wellbeing Collective. Uh, we'll just sit there and watch them have hugs. <laughs> no, thank you, Tui, um, and for Pua and Donna for kicking our evening off. Um, and I'm happy that the, the clicky thing happened to someone like you. <laughs> well, because you're a person who's just like, you're not going to care, you're not going to freaky be like, it's not working, it's not working, fix it, make it happen. So um, another round of applause for our whanau from the Rangai Collective. I'm going to say if you need some support and well-being, which I think most of us do in some point in time, we've got some amazing whānau who will just be hanging around the corner. Feel free to have a chat to them. Feel free to give them some money. Just saying. Um, we're going to kick into it. So our next sponsor, you're going to get the theme. We're going to do sponsor presentation, sponsor presentation. Our next sponsor is a good friend of mine. Now, he's probably the most humble person I have ever met, probably to the fact that if I can't see him, he's probably snuck out of the room potentially. Um, so our next sponsor, Lee Tumutumu and Arataki Systems. So... What's super cool about this is that Arataki is, a, is an alum of the very first Kōkiri cohort from three years ago. Um, and they're our very first alumni sponsor. So there's something to be said in that in terms of Lee as the bro and as their whānau, because they are a whānau business, coming back and wanting to support the next generation or the next few folk coming through from a Māori perspective. So we've got a big mihi for Lee, his whānau, for all you continue to do in the digital tech space, from uplifting our rangatahi around the country to building 
the digital footprint of marae around the country for my tipaki paki i'm the ceo and founder of arataki cultural trails we have developed new zealand's first proximity based cultural content delivery platform on a global scale, there's not enough Indigenous information available to non-Indigenous people. We came up with a digital method to be able to tell our stories. Because it is proximity based, you actually have to be physically at that location to unlock that information. We're using things like GPS, geofencing and also Bluetooth beacon technology to release content when you're in locations. We're at a point now where we're ready to scale up which for us means spreading our networks around New Zealand so that you'll be able to use the Arataki app to consume or engage with literally hundreds if not thousands of culturally significant sites around New Zealand. I'm glad you remembered the clap part because it makes my life easier. We're training, we're getting there. Um, the biggest thing with Lee is for him to be coming back supporting our whānau and as one of the biggest takeaways I got today talking with many of the teams was them sharing the opportunity that they've had to meet people like Lee who know exactly the shoes they're in um, and they can speak from experience. So finally, our second team tonight, again, hoping they're out there, hail from Ōtautahi Christchurch. They have developed a marketplace app designed to support tourism in this post-COVID world. Their app understands the unique behaviours of us all as individual tourists and matches us or with activities best suited to our needs, our budgets, our timeframes, and more. So please join me and welcome to the stage, Angus from Romeo. Ko Afrema te awa, ko takatimu te mauka, ko takatimu te waka, ko Tahu Potiki Te Tangata, Ko Angus Tokoonga. I'm Angus, CEO and founder of Romeo. Kia ora, I'm Tyler. I was born in South Africa but currently living in Christchurch. I'm the CFO for Romeo. We're using emerging technology to build a scalable tourism marketplace to plan perfect holidays day by day as the moods and preferences change. We challenge the way people travel. We challenge the current norm of using blog-heavy websites that aren't engaging the next generation of travellers. We create amazing features, beautifully designed to inspire young people to see and do more. Romeo does all this by being honest around its recommendations and matching travellers to experiences they're most likely to enjoy in a way that's fair and feels second nature. Today, I'm going to tell you a story about two travellers. Cool. Oh, sorry, I went backwards. Let's start that again. <laughs> cool. Kia ora everyone, I'm Angus, and I'm going to tell you a story about two travellers. One is John and our team, who very diligently plans his holidays down to the half hour. He has unforgettable trips everywhere he goes. His only issue is that this process takes about eight hours, and you think that's long, but it's actually faster than the average, which varies between 10 to 20. And myself, I'm the opposite of that. When I work, I plan, and I'm good at it. And when I go on holiday, the last thing I want to be doing is planning. What I want is to wake up and not know what the day holds, and then know that it's going to be all right. But actually, this is a fantasy. I end up burning my limited holiday time, either on foot or on my phone, just trying to find something to do. So for John, it takes far too long. For me, I'm not maximizing my holidays because I can't travel in the way that I want to. So to start, we're going to be focusing on a mix of Gen Z and millennials because Tourism New Zealand has identified that young people, while suck at planning, and it's hard to find recommendations. 
but there's another side to the story, and that's that small operators are hurting right now, and they're reverting to old marketing techniques to engage my generation, which isn't working. So one of those tour operators is Unreal Fishing down in Queenstown. He already takes direct booking, so he doesn't need any more help with that. What his issue is, is getting his website in front of the right customers, which, as it turns out, would have been me. So this problem is not isolated just to Unreal Fishing. There's been innovations over the years of how we get our recommendations. We've had Lonely Planet's curated guide booklets. We've had TripAdvisor providing peer-to-peer -peer reviews. And now Romeo is proposing a machine learning solution that weighs up your unique preferences and traveling history to provide personalized recommendations anywhere, anytime. So, Romeo, a marketplace for finding the best tourism activities for you. So, Romeo is brought to, you, brought to you by the Mighty Seven, seven young professionals in business and tech. Our platform works a little bit different to most platforms you've seen. What we do is we ask you a series of questions to understand your preferences. Once we've profiled you, we take you to our homepage where you can access all your matches. You'll see on the right and bottom of an activity card is how close of a match you are. When you find something you like, you can simply save it for later to complete in your own time. Now, we're serving a wide range of stakeholders in the tourism industry, and we even allow video, to, uh, we even allow video content to convert the sale. So, Romeo is an AI and tourism company, and New Zealand's the perfect market to validate our solution. We have a high variability and density of activities in our country. But what about COVID? Are you crazy? Short answer, absolutely. <laughs> Everyone has an innate desire to travel, and my generation loves experiences, and it's what we live for. Depending on how the COVID recovery pans out, we can keep our costs lean and scale accordingly. And this downtime is the perfect time to perfect our recommendations so they're the best in the world. And we acknowledge there's a huge range of competitors of all different sizes. But the fact is, 92% of independent planners still primarily use international aggregators, Google, TripAdvisor, and Booking.com to plan their holidays. So to get the credibility we need in the travelers, we're forming partnerships with RTOs who have engaged in our development. And we're pursuing partnerships with airport terminals and accommodation providers. To get the experiences side, we have a partnership with Viator for 2,000 plus things to see and do. We have a relationship with Tourism New Zealand. And we are integrating with DOC so that you can have a better way of discovering all the amazing walks across our country. The first thing you'll notice about our pricing is it's free for travellers. We charge the experience providers as a marketing expense. And initially, we are providing a permission model to validate our solution. But in the future, for any new tour operators, we'll be offering a subscription model. So we can't outspend our massive competitors on any digital channel. So we're rolling up our sleeves and getting out there, uh, hustling in the real world. And boy, are we excited. So we have a very detailed financial forecast where we look to be making profit by June 2022. And our ask is $400,000. We are able to keep our costs lean through marketing partnerships and through partnerships for free office space. I just want to finish on saying thank you so much for the coffee, Fano. I have no idea how you've helped us condense 14 weeks into a five-minute pitch. And it's because you guys care, and it really shows. So thank you. Namahi nui matiwa. So he ran on stage before I could get him. He also took our remote. <laughs> and Gus. So I'm, I say we're going to get a chant going to get him to come back. So three, two, one. And Gus. And Gus. And Gus. And Gus. And Gus. Because we, we really need that remote back. <laughs> Started us tripping his suit off already. So, if you've seen that young lad, um, when he came in with the suit on, I was trying to figure out who he was because he does not dress like that. Uh, I think Taylor might have been the first time he actually brushed his hair. Um, but, I, yeah, I, I joke, but I don't. Um, so, cool, sponsor time. So, our next sponsor, Amazon Web Services, AWS, Shane's in the room, he's over there. 
So, you know, jumped in with any free stuff. Has been supporting Corkity and its founders since 2020, so the second cohort. Providing free credits to startup teams to use AWS services, helping reduce the entry level cost of getting their digital businesses up and running, which, if you don't know, is a pretty major for a small business just kicking off when you've got no money. So any hand up is really, really appreciated. The credits have certainly been useful for our next team, enabling them to deploy their software. So we want to thank you, Shane, for your ongoing support. Now, we've got a video coming up soon, but I'm going to read a little blurb from one other team before we get there, too. So working alongside the Corky team for the very first time this year is Company X. So they joined the Waka this year to provide tech support while also helping founders to think critically about their tech stacks and product development pathways, something that they probably hadn't really considered prior. So we want to share a shout out to Dave and Jeremy for reaching out to us here at Corkity and Ben Judge for your inputs into this year's program. We're going to roll some videos, you'll hear some cool stuff, then you'll see me again. Company X is a leading designer and developer of software. Our crack team includes project managers, analysts, designers and developers, all focused on designing and developing the best software. Our expertise is in listening to our customers' business problems, from multinationals down to sole traders, and solving them with carefully crafted software. Directors David Hallett and Jeremy Hughes have more than 50 years of combined experience in the IT industry. Current clients include US-based multinational Cisco Systems Inc., the New Zealand Transport Agency and New Zealand Police. Company X, the software specialist with the X Factor. Meet the new builder. In the new age of rolling up your sleeves and getting your hands dirty. They're in labs, lofts, and war rooms. Launching scrappy startups and reinventing big business. They see what doesn't exist, and they make it exist. They know the question isn't if, but when. They know the freedom to fail is the freedom to build. And they don't freak out stop, 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 stop. when they run into a problem. These are the new builders. And we're the cloud that's obsessed with turning their dreams into realities. With the most capabilities, the most innovation, the most customers, and the most experience. We're the cloud that breaks down barriers. When others say no, we let builders say yes. Because we believe everything gets better when you let nothing stand in the builder's way. Amazon Web Services. Build on. So I continue to shout out to AWS and the team at Company X. And now, I guess what I want to make as a more pertinent point on that is the fortunate thing with Corkity is when we have sponsors here, it's not about someone who's just giving something. I'm not talking about just giving cash or in kind, something like that. These people turn up, which is super, super cool. And it's far more important than just sending something from afar. But people who actually rock here, spend time in the trenches with the founders is something really, really appreciative by their founders. Our next team. Hail from the mighty lakes of Te Arawa and are focused on inclusivity. Appreciate that the world has become ever more reliant on digital devices, which I think we can all agree on. They also acknowledge that there is an increasing number of people globally who are disadvantaged and limited every time they go online as a result of neurological challenges. So, humati paki paki for our final changing the virtual world one phone, tablet, or laptop at a time. Danielle and Roz from Include You. For Danielle Cordwell Toko Ingwa, together with Roz Morshead, we are the co founders of Include You. We met at law school over 15 years ago and have been friends ever since. So, our company builds web accessibility software to help people access information online. Our vision for the future is for the online world to be more inclusive for people who are neurodiverse. We are both parents of children who are neurodiverse and were shocked and saddened that there was limited software support to help them navigate the online world. We know there are lots of people in our communities affected in this way. Digital accessibility is a growing global and social issue. Most of the online world isn't designed for people who are neurodiverse. Kenako 
Roberto Katoa, ko Danielle Caldwell Pukuingua, ko Ros Morshead Tene. Four years ago, my daughter started school, and we discovered she was suffering from debilitating anxiety and overwhelmed by a learning environment that wasn't designed or resourced for her specific learning needs. And as a parent, it is incredibly distressing to watch your child suffer and feel helpless to do anything about it. When I heard Danielle's story, it took me back roughly a decade when one of my children had been falling behind at school too. We ended up testing for Erlen syndrome and dyslexia, and we were shocked and devastated to find our child had an impairment and we genuinely didn't know. Back then the school knew nothing about Erlen syndrome and had no resources or support capability. As Danielle has highlighted, 10 years on, not much has changed. So we decided to do something about it. So we're all swimming along in the online world. But for people who may be challenged by neurodiversity, such as dyslexia, Erlen syndrome and colour blindness, they may experience that world very differently. We know, for example, there's people in this room tonight who are challenged by the pink fish in this image. We doubt there's anybody in this room tonight who doesn't know somebody who is neurodiverse. Digital accessibility is about equal access and engagement with online information. But interestingly, the online world isn't designed to be digitally accessible. It's actually designed to be visually appealing. And that directly impacts those students who are neurodiverse, affecting not only their confidence, but their long-term learning outcomes as well. We want to make a difference, and we want to help students succeed in the online environment. But why now? Well, the global pandemic has accelerated the online learning environment and has amplified the urgent need for better online accessibility options. And further, our market validation confirms that the education sector in New Zealand is moving towards becoming more learner-centric. So, we developed an accessibility software tool for students to help them access and engage online information. And that software tool is called BEX. Some example features of the BEX product include a reading guide, a reading ruler, colorblind hyperlink underlining, and dyslexia friendly font, to name a few. So what does our market look like? Well, we know there's approximately 1.2 million students across 3,200 institutes in New Zealand. Our market validation indicates approximately 25% of those students, that's 300,000 students, have some form of learning impairment. We estimate our BEX product, we can service approximately 10 to 15% of that market initially. And we aim to do that on a one-to-many approach to schools directly on an annual license model of approximately 600 schools initially. And we already have four beta tester schools ready to go now. Looking at a competitor analysis, we've identified four direct competitors, none of whom are based in New Zealand. And looking at our overall traction and momentum, well, tonight we are humbled and honoured to have completed Kōkiri. In the next naught to six months, we'll be launch, uh, beta testing our BEX product and be launching into the New Zealand market. And while we're here tonight to introduce you to our BEX product, we've also been doing some work on a web accessibility scan tool. And during the Kōkiri program, we've had an opportunity to submit that product to a government department request for a proposal. And in the very near future, we'll be launching that product into the US market where digital accessibility is mandatory. So how can you help? Well, we're looking for a business advisor who has experience launching software as a service into the US market. We're asking you all to follow us on social media at InclueView. And if there's anyone in the audience tonight that is associated with the education provider and would like to become an early adopter of the BEX product, we would love to hear from you. Namahi, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa.
ask you a quick question while you're here. Don't worry. So, because I know there's a purpose behind it, but you don't just come up with the name Bex, right? What does it mean? I think Rose should take that question. <laughs> <laughs> it's an acronym for browser extension. See, learning. See, here's a, ah, sweet. So, once again, whānau, whōmai te whaki whaki for our whānau here. Rose and Danielle. They were actually probably the hardest working people I've ever met. I'm not even joking. So, our next sponsor is MYOB. So, they're another OG. Okay, and what I mean by that is they are a long term partner from day one. So, they're actually, I think, possibly even the very first corporate sponsor. Now, how we got MYOB on board was they had, this year at the time, put out an article, was a bit of a write up saying how they wanted to support more small regional businesses and Mali startups. So I was like, sweet, that's in the news. I'm going to call them out on it, see if they're actually going to do it. Because, <laughs> you know, you know like people say that stuff, right? So it was out there, made contact. Basically, a week later, we were sitting in the office, catching up with Carolyn Louie at that point. You're like, yep, sweet, done deal. You're like, yo. So the idea of people backing up what they're saying is super amazing. So as an NZ startup story themselves, MYOB understand the journey our teams are working through. And by providing your software to them, you continue to demonstrate Aroha for the small guys. So a big mickey for the team, and in particular Emma and Katie, who I don't think are here today, but Grant, who's going to come up and share a few words with us for your support for our whānau. Tēnā koutou katoa. Um, I'm Grant McIver. There's no video, so you've got me in real life. Um, <laughs> I'm a head of technology at MYB, so passionate about tech, and it's my privilege to be here tonight to celebrate this Kokiri Accelerator program and the efforts of the 2021 cohort. At MYB, we know it takes a lot of effort, passion, and time to launch, um, then run the business, and keep it successful. And we're really incredibly proud to continue to support this initiative. Offering the right support and frameworks is fundamental to helping these businesses start and also set themselves up for success in the future. It's great to have seen the success from past cohorts as well. And the passion that these entrepreneurs here that you see tonight bring to their endeavours, as well as the unique perspective that they apply through the program with these principles in the program, um, is something that's really special and we want to continue to encourage, support and celebrate these. This is the first year I've been personally involved, so not just from wearing the t-shirt and being at MYB, but actually also working alongside one of the companies, um, or startups, um, as an advisor as well. And that's been one of the highlights of my week, being involved in this. As a strong believer in technology, which is not surprising considering I'm the head of technology, um, I believe there's a lot that technology can do um, to bring positive change within society. And it's great to see this mixture today of innovative and thoughtful business concepts and then using technology to bring those to life. It's great to see the turnout of support for this as well. And I'm really pleased that I came down and supported this. I love being here in person. And I really look forward to continuing to see the rest of the teams. And have a great evening and thank you. Cool, thank you, Grant. Hey, and just thinking too, when Lee was, we had his picture up here from Arataki, if you thought he looked familiar and you might have seen him before, he possibly had, because a few years ago, he was like on the back of like every bus, um, doing some stuff with MYOB, so he was, and I remember just being on the train going to Auckland, and I'd see my bro's face, and, and he, you know, everyone flicks in my picture, and it's like he's never seen it before, but he knew it was happening. So, our fourth team tonight, and I get, few you come round, bro, because you're going to see your bro up soon are taking on the challenge, an A challenge that impacts all whānau, irrespective of who you are, where you're from, and all that good stuff, and have the aim of having all of Aotearoa better informed and empowered with financial decision making, using the methods most relevant and reflective of the rising generation. So please join me in welcoming Tyrone from In The Flow State presenting their kaupapa still. Kia ora, my name is Tyrone Tangata Makati. I am Cook Island Māori. 
I am a co-founder of In The Flow State and we're working on a project called Still. Kia ora, my name is Camilla Watahira. I am a co-founder of In The Flow State and we're working on a project called Still. Our company help young Māori and Pacific adults navigate through their journey with money. So we have um, recognised from our research that uh, young Māori and Pacific people are one financial emergency away from financial despair. And so for us, um, we know that something as simple as a car breaking down for an individual could mean a domino effect to not being able to provide for their family. So for us, we want to be able to create a solution that it really helps our people and creates hope for them, no matter what circumstances arise. So the vision for the future for us is to see a future where our young Māori and Pacific people can navigate through their journey with money with confidence. Tyron and I grew up in low socioeconomic communities where we saw a lot of our Māori and Pacific families um, struggle and specifically struggle when it comes to finances and we saw the devastating impacts that that had on our whānau. So I share the same why, you know, seeing people uh, struggle with their finances. I've always wanted to do something with it. And for us, we saw an opportunity to create a business and do something specific with that. And we also recognise that for a lot of our whānau, a lot of that um, start of that struggle actually happens in their younger years, especially when they become of age to take on debt, like credit cards and personal loans. So we have a passion to really help um, at that stage of life. Kia ora koutou. I am glad to be here. I started Kōkiri with a personal challenge. A close uncle of mine had been told he had days to live and I shared how he struggled financially and had no insurance or anything to leave his family. Two weeks ago, I attended his funeral. For my family, it was a sad time. And for anyone who has lost a loved one, seeing them go through pain can be hard. Now I know why we say rest in peace. Because for some people, peace doesn't come to the end of life. No more pain, no more struggle. And for us, we want to change that. We want people to feel peace while they're still alive. Because did you know that one in five young adults feel physically ill due to financial stress? 10% of young people take regular days off due to money worries. And 46% of Māori and Pacific people are earning below the living wage. We talked to over 150 young Māori and Pacific people and they told us that they are stressed about money and worried about their future. And at the root of it all, we identified that young Māori and Pacific people are constantly one emergency away from financial despair. So this is the team, myself, Tyrone. I'm a co-founder and I've been helping in communities for almost 10 years. My co-founder, Camilla, has a background in sales and leading teams for almost 10 years. We also have Jordan and Naomi, who have more than 20 years of experience in insurance and debt collection. And we have been supported by three great advisors who have more than 40 years of experience in startups and the financial technology space. So our solution is, we want to build a pocket platform to help people be at peace with money. So how does it work? Well, there are three components that are summarized on the dashboard. The first component is focused on a user's money. We will use a third party API to draw figures from a user's account to show the inflow and outflow of their money. This will help us provide insights and recommendations to help them with their money. The second component is focused on a user's emotions, and this is where the magic happens. From our research, we know that our target group has a negative relationship with money, and that actually affects their quality of life. We have tools that we will use to understand and help them improve their relationship with money. And then our third component, we want to continue to help our users build their knowledge and capability to improve their financial literacy and their relationship with money. So our initial target market is young Māori and Pacific people here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. We know that there is a larger population that exists globally across the Pacific and in other countries such as Australia and United States. 
However, at this stage, we're looking to serve people here to really understand what is needed. So our initial target is to get 6,650 people within our serviceable addressable market on our platform. So with that target in mind, we project a revenue of 400K annually through subscriptions. We see opportunity to find partners and we're currently talking to banks and other government departments to see what possibilities exist. And for our company in the flow state, we have a mission to see low socioeconomic communities thrive. And we are confident by helping young Maldian Pacific people improve their relationship with money that our communities will be strengthened as well. We believe with our experience and with where the world is right now, the time is right to bring a product to market. With COVID, people have told us that they are unsure about their employment and are feeling more pressure financially. We have also seen the rise of buy now, pay later applications and how vulnerable users are finding themselves in debt. And fortunately too, we're seeing the development of open banking and what we can do with technology now. So in the next 12 months, we want to continue testing our prototype to make sure we build something that people want, build a community of interested users so they can come on the journey with us and to seek resources to help with all areas of development. So our ask is, if you fit our description or you know anyone that does, go to our site or share it, the still.app, or if you can right now, if you've got your phone, pull it out and scan that QR code to go to the site. Since Wednesday, we, we already have 140 people that have told us what they think, but we want more of you on our journey. Because for us, our aim is to help young Māori and Pacific people enjoy life and find peace while they're still alive. Thank you. Oh, I'm just going to get the click of it now. Come on, bro. Oh, no, bro. <laughs> so, thanks, Ty. Cheers, mate. Um, I think, finally, what you'll notice, too, is that what everyone's doing is they're trying to achieve things that are far bigger than themselves. And, you know, you sit there and I think you'd lie to yourself if when someone's been speaking, you haven't got emotional at one point this evening, okay, because there's something that hits there, whether it's impacted you or someone you've seen. But when I hear Ty talk around what they're doing there, I start to realise that they're changing lives and they're changing generations of lives as well. So... Um, I guess that's what I love about this co offer and the types of whānau it attracts to do what they want to do. We've got our next sponsored break. So, here we go. Hill Ference, here we are at the back, my man, <laughs> has been an incredible supporter of the Kōkiri program, providing wisdom and advice to startup teams to prepare them to raise capital. And we believe, well, actually, I believe that we can, I can confidently say for all of our teams that they are incredibly grateful for the time and advice that has been shared. And so we want to thank you to Rob um, for your energy that you've brought and for changing the startup investment landscape here in Aotearoa. And because he's never going to look up, if I don't say his name, for my bro Aisha, um, their newest partner, he's looking away now, um, for everything you do to kind of make the relationship happen, to have our whānau, to be able to have conversations like this in this space. So hold your applause, because I'm going to read someone else up too. And then you can have like a collective, just like a massive fucky fucky. <laughs> So we're also here to acknowledge Phil Taylor. Now I saw Phil walk in. There we go. So, and Shirley. And Shirley, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Does anyone here watch darts? So he gets it. So like, every time I hear the word Phil, name Phil Taylor, he's a, he's a dart player. And so it's a connotation that goes off in my head, but no one else gets it. All good. Google it later. <laughs> um, so Phil and the team from Tompkins Wake providing the one thing that many early stage companies overlook which is sage legal advice on how to start a business and get it right from the beginning. Because let's be fair, we all have a good idea, then we start doing something with it, and then we have to reflect, look back, like, actually, should have done that, should have done that, should have done that. And by that time, we've kind of got ourselves in a bit of a predicament when we're trying to backtrack. So thank you for our, helping our whānau get it right from day one. And then whānau, now is our collective for Mighty Fucky Fucky. <laughs> Sweet. So there's no video. So, you know, so you're, I got you guys used to like a pattern and then I ripped it out from you. So our next startup, literally build world. So let that sink in for a bit. What does that mean? Um, the Granary are a full service virtual production creative tech company. Don't worry if you don't know what that means. You're going to find out that empower creativity. And I like that. They empower creativity. Not sure what that means. Well, their showreel tells an amazing story. So my encouragement is to Google these two founders who are going to come up and you'll see what I mean. And trust me, don't do it now. That's kind of rude. If, you know, if you're doing that, you're on their phone and yada, all that good stuff. But finally, 
For Mighty Paki Paki for the founders of the Granary, Victor and Amber. <laughs> So kia ora, ko Amber Māori, toko ingoa. And kia ora, I'm Victor. And we are the co-founders of The Granary. So The Granary is a creative tech company who specialises in virtual production across multiple platforms for content creation. Our vision for the future is to democratise filmmaking for the masses. Mm. We want to allow creators who haven't had access to groundbreaking technologies to dream big and create more. Since the creation of film, it's gone through many different evolutions. We've gone from celluloid film cameras to digital cameras, from optical effects to digital visual effects. Now we're at the forefront of the next revolution, the virtual one. With this new revolution that's taking place in filmmaking, we're allowing creatives access to the sort of tooling that they never could dream of using before. Much like the Super 8 camera allowed people to start making home videos, we're allowing people to start making their dreams come true. So one element that we've already prototyped in our virtual production pipeline has been the use of LED screens. LED screens or LED volumes allow creatives to make decisions on the fly whilst the cameras are rolling. So we can redress, we can change the time of day, we can swap out the location without ever having to leave the studio or with a click of a button. A driving force for us is he tangata, he tangata, he tangata. For us, it's about the people. So we feel that our technology brings forth storytelling in a way that others may not have had access to or been able to deliver themselves. We have over three decades of experience in the film industry, having worked on Hollywood's biggest blockbusters. We think it's about time that we start applying everything we've learnt and start making our own blockbusters here locally. It's important for us with the technology that we build that it empowers a wider diverse range of voices to not only be seen and heard, but to be out there in the world. Since the dawn of time, humans have been storytellers, from orators to cave paintings, and now VFX blockbusters. Unfortunately though, if you weren't Disney, you probably couldn't afford to make them. That is until a couple from Wellington decided to shake things up. Kia ora, we're the Granary. We're here to democratise filmmaking for the next generation. Join us in the evolution of storytelling. And that's what we call a cold open. <laughs> and kia ora everyone, I'm Victor, and we are the co-founders of The Granary, New Zealand's first full-service virtual production creative tech studio. We have over three decades of experience between us and the entertainment industry, from everything from uh, global ad campaigns to television series to some of the biggest blockbusters in the world. What you saw there uh, showcases a part of our MVP. A content creation pipeline that utilizes game engine technology, positional tracking hardware, and an LED volume for an, which allows for an unprecedented level of creativity. In that demo, which we shot over the course of two days, we traveled to multiple locations without ever leaving the studio. It gave us the freedom to move mountains and oceans when needed, all in real time at the click of a button. If we wanted to, we could have shot a sunset for 10 hours. But what is virtual production? Well, I'm glad you asked, Amber. <laughs> virtual production <laughs> is the next evolution in content creation. We've gone from silent movies to talkies, from black and white to color, and from optical visual effects to digital and a lot of green screen. And uh, now we're at the cusp of the, uh, the virtual revolution. It's a convergence between game engine tech and digital filmmaking that allows for an unprecedented, unprecedented level of creativity in efficiency and interactivity. There we go. <laughs> All of this is just the tip of the iceberg, and we have roadmap tooling and software solutions to work towards. The applications and use cases for a lot of this technology will begin to emerge in years to come. And we haven't even begun to mention the cross-media opportunities this presents. Assets and environments created using this pipeline for film content can easily be repurposed and used for games if required. 
aiding in the development of a multi-platform content IP. And we're just the tip of the spear. Our plan is to fundamentally disrupt and democratize an industry. We want to allow creators who never had access to the sort of tooling that massive production companies have had to be able to dream big and get their ambitious ideas on the screen. We've already had inquiries from television commercial producers, feature films, and episodic TV series, both locally and internationally, hungry to use our services. But fundamentally, what we're offering you today is not solely a service company. At our heart, we are a software and content IP R&D studio, selectively choosing projects which will allow us to iterate, test, and build the software and tools for the future. So we hope that we've piqued some interest, and uh, if anyone's keen, just hit us up whilst we, uh, we ride this rocket to the moon. And um, <laughs> yeah, we're, uh, we're about to try and shake things up. And uh, yeah, we hope that we can try and create uh, a more sustainable future for the creative industries in Aotearoa. Yeah. And I just want to take a moment now just to recognize and acknowledge our fellow community uh, with the news that has happened today in our industry. We stand here for you and with you because we know how creative, technically experienced, and just what we can offer to the world is immense. And so this gives us the power to be able to push forward so that we can get our stories out to the world. And what is the most important thing in the world for us? It is he tangata, he tangata, he tangata, our people. No reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Awesome, thank you too. Like that, you know when you think of that, that notion of actually, actually creating worlds, it's pretty buzzy, then you see that you're like, they're just sitting there playing around. And I love how Victor's real nonchalant. Like at the end, he's like, so if you're keen, we're going to ride this rocket ship to the moon. Like just real casual ads. <laughs> but at the same time, you know there's that underlying super confidence. You're like, actually, I believe you. Um, and just a relaxed nature of like, actually, I really, really believe you. Cool. So we know the time. What's next? What do we reckon is next? Sponsor. Oh, no, sponsor. <laughs> Come on, man. Deja. Okay, so here we go. Potoma Trust has been serving Māori businesses for over 30 years, and as a learning institute, both Kōkiri and Te Wānu Aotearoa are very proud of this partnership with Potoma Trust and look forward to deepening their involvement with you over the next 30 years. So, he mihi nui ki koe, te rangatira Richard, I think you are, my friend. Um, so, thank you and acknowledge you for that. Along with that, sitting right next to you, actually, another long-term partner of... <laughs> is AJ Park, and I think Aubrey just realised Linnell was right behind him. Um, <laughs> Linnell has been an incredible advocate from day one, um, spending time with our startups to actually get to know them and actually take them through the journey of understanding the value that they have and the intellectual property that they have and how important that is. So as an incredible advocate, she has consistently given time to assist our startups to understand the strategic approach to intellectual property. So special thanks goes to you also, Linnell, for your work and your capacity building for our teams in the IP space. So. Yes, yeah, clap, man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so our next founder, a solo founder, and I'm not going to say that I have a bias, but I do, um, because she hails from the mighty tight after team. So our next startup is taking the traditional fashion industry, adding a bit of tech, and then taking an incredibly large problem mashing it all together. And so, like I said, hailing from the mighty Thai Lafferty with ambitions on taking her talents across the globe, please join me in welcoming Paige, founder of The Best Kept Secret. Kia ora, my name is Paige and I am the founder of The Best Kept Secret. We are an online rental marketplace that leases designer dresses to women for special occasions over a four to eight day basis. Our brand has an overarching belief that within the next five to 10 years, the far majority of women in New Zealand and eventually women all over the world will have their wardrobes on some type of subscription, similar to Spotify or Netflix, in the sense that you pay a flat rate monthly fee 
but rather than receive your music or your entertainment, you are receiving your three or four sable articles of clothing in the post every month. When it comes to celebrating diversity, we really think that there is a value set that women place on self-expression and that clothing has a lot to do with the way that we choose to express our various moods and identities. We created the Best Kept Secret for the fashionable, eco-conscious, girl boss woman of Aotearoa. We are building an online rental marketplace that is going to connect retail shoppers with a wider variety of quality designer brands. We exist to provide every woman with that visible change of confidence and empowerment that comes with wearing something amazing. We're passionate about creating a world where quality products are accessible through this fun, smart, sustainable new way of retail shopping. We want to be a service that helps women to unlock that part of themselves, that gives them the confidence to nail a job interview or speak at an event. We are out to solve the quintessential millennial problem of a closet full of clothes with nothing to wear. My name is Paige and I am the founder of The Best Kept Secret. Our brand is out to solve the quintessential millennial problem of a closet full of clothes with nothing to wear. 50% of our wardrobes are comprised of items that are only worn three times or less due to these products either disintegrating after three or four uses because they're made in low quality or because these products go out of style as trends change, our lives change, our bodies change. We think that people should be spending their money on products that are meaningful to them, from brands that they value and have had experience with, on products that they know will last them forever. The Best Kept Secret is a service that could only exist today. We improve the quality of the products we buy and manufacture in NZ by offering Kiwis a subscription service that allows them to experience a product before they purchase it. The idea is to offer the 1.2 million women across New Zealand an online catalogue of contemporary and designer clothing in the cloud that they never have to commit to owning. But the way that we truly provide our value is by mastering the business behind our business. On the outside, we offer our customers access to a wider variety of quality designer brands without the designer price tag. But underneath that stylish marquee, we are this bottomless pit of deeply valuable product data for designers and manufacturers. How many times can this dress be worn before it wears? Which brands do people respond to most? How often are people truly satisfied enough to follow through with a purchase? Only we know this. And because of this, we have to be just as tech forward as we are fashion forward. Whether we are aware of it or not, we are all in the business of personal branding. With the rise of social media, also came the rise of conspicuous consumption and trend-based purchasing. We create these idealized internet versions of ourselves that we like to call our personal brand. The Best Kept Secret believes that this major culture shift now demands new ways of innovation within the retail space. From a consumer value perspective, we are enabling women to maintain the trendless version of themselves by providing them with access to an online wardrobe at their fingertips at a mass market price point. From an industry value perspective, we are generating our own ecosystem of traceable rental statistics that we can report back to designers so that they're armed with the statistics that they need to benchmark themselves in the industry and create pieces that consumers will love and wear forever. We have met or corresponded with over half of the 30 designers that we've reached out to so far, with all of them showing an appetite for the rental space and an appetite on both sides of the marketplace for this service. However, for us to know if a subscription model will work, we have to eliminate some of the risk involved with our idea and start from the bottom up. Our MVP operates like an e-commerce platform and allows us to rent clothing on demand for either four or eight days. On the user side, they can create an account 
and browse our selection of inventory. View their previous or upcoming rentals via their account. Choose their booking for a four or eight day period and check their card out via an online payment gateway. On the admin side, we can view a dashboard of every current and historic rental, create and configure new products, track outgoing and incoming orders via courier tracking labels, and view a dashboard of customer product and marketing analytics. The more holistic view of our brand is that we are actually this data science driven, reverse logistics, hardware and software platform that happens to front this clothing rental business. The way we collect revenue is through asset utilization, and our assets are our clothing. Our job is to clean, repair, process, and ship inventory, and translate that whole process into valuable metrics that will not only increase the ROI on our inventory, but also help to fill in the gaps on what we choose to buy and manufacture in the first place. We've identified three competitors in the clothing rental space, which are Designer Wardrobe, The Borrowed Collective, and O-RentMe. However, we also view these brands as helping us to introduce the concept of clothing rental into the market. And although they are not direct competitors, we also see fast fashion brands as competition, as they're really good at giving customers what they want. Variety, at an affordable price, right now. Our hope is that by making these high-end products affordable and accessible, we can incentivize that 80% of the retail market that previously spent their disposable income on fast fashion brands to rather spend that money interacting with our brands, brands, brands on our platform instead. We currently have three people on our team. Myself, who spent two years in sewing school and has a background in recruitment. My colleague Celeste, who has uh, six years experience in supply chain and logistics. And my sister Paris, who has a background in retail and customer service. We believe that being victims ourselves of this problem of a closet full of clothes with nothing to wear has given us a deeper understanding of our customers and a sharper plan of action to send our message to our target audience. Our mission is to create a fun, smart and sustainable new way of retail shopping. The aim is to create a conscious consumer and a less wasteful way of living. As we move forward into our investigation, research and feasibility phase of our idea, we are asking you all to follow our journey on our social platforms, subscribe to our updates, get in touch to send us your feedback, and remember us when you need an outfit for your next event. No data. See you next week. Yes, we can go to. See you next week. Thank you. So I'm going to ask you a question, Finch. So like I got, I got some fun that are like three XL, four XL, five XL. <laughs> yeah, we can hook them up. Oh, you don't look at me when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> Although I got notes in there when you're saying it. Trends change, styles change, bodies change. I felt they were like a personal dick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Paige. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Fano. So, we've got our next sponsored break. So, Auckland Unlimited has come on board this year to support our two Auckland based startups. You've met one of them, Tyrone and Camilla, just before, and you're going to meet the second one very shortly. Um, providing cash and in-kind support through the grid. So we want to thank Nidia Brewton. I know Nidia is here because I have seen her. Uh, I actually uh, And the team at Auckland Unlimited, Kanui Tenuhi. So we've got a bit to play then, and you're going to hear from me one more time tonight. The Go Hard on Tech initiative is a direct result of the Auckland Future Now Summit that we held in August 2020. Right after the first lockdown, we thought, how is Auckland's economy going to operate in this COVID-19 world? So we quickly got into action and brought together government, industry, education, entrepreneurs, people right across the ecosystem to work on what's a combined vision for what Auckland could look like if we really put all our effort into growing our tech industry. We've held a range of workshops and we're working to a deadline of providing a strategy that we can then go out to all of the industry, out to government, out to the world to say that Auckland is going to be the place for the technology sector. The world is actually looking for answers right now and I think 
a lot of these answers can be found in the tech sector. But you know, tech is really not the, the, the real challenge. The challenge is actually uh, leadership and governance and bringing the ecosystem together. It's exciting that the dialogue is happening because I think the idea of cohesion of ideas and the collectiveness of those ideas will start to find things that we can do. So the Go Hard On Tech strategy, it's industry-led, so it's not government saying what needs to be done. We're listening to tech leaders in industry on the changes that need to be made. We are the fourth most diverse country in the world. And so what I see in, in Go Hard On Tech is this opportunity to double down on the culture and values that come from that cultural diversity with technology. And I think that's an incredibly exciting opportunity. So we raise things like how do we decolonise, um, how do we indigenise, um, basically what are these programmes for helping everyone, not just Māori. We needed up front to really challenge and air some of the grievances before we could get to the heart and the meaning of, of what what does better look like? What does the future look like? For me, uh, being an entrepreneur in this space, I want to be a good rangatira. I want to be a good chief. And as I venture into this new land called technology, I want to make sure that uh, I'm making it easier for our people to come through. Imagine bringing that usefulness, our creativity, and our technology skills all into growing incredible companies, telling our stories, and exporting Auckland to the rest of the world. Let's really work together and go hard on tech. Let's make Auckland a tech sector for the world. I know we can do it. Oh, a lot of familiar faces in there. And I guess what I'm thinking of it is, now I've seen Jerome. He is here. Does Josh come with you too, bro? He just turns up on that. Just does all that stuff, does all that public stuff like that, eh, bro? So I guess just an acknowledgement of the alum that are actually in the room. So we've got the crew from Crotomation. I know we've got the whanau from No Mara. We've got Lee. We've got Manu and, the, and Nikki from Barrett Dynamics. Is there anyone else that I haven't seen? Evie. Oh, yes, Evie. Oh, she just, she become a coach this year. We just kind of, we don't forget about you. But <laughs> you're doing many, many other amazing things. So it's cool to see that, I guess, that continuation of whanau coming in the room and actually kicking... Yeah, bro. I was like, new hairdo. <laughs> I was like, so just awesome to see the final. Oh, right, now I'm looking around. There's heaps more people, actually, to be fair. Um, just the acknowledgement of, of you coming and actually sharing time with our whanau. And I guess that goes to everyone. Um, and although I'm paying special attention to our alum, particularly because it's that connection that makes a program like Kōkiri that much more special, is that you come and you're a part of it, irrespective of who you are and what you do. You can't ever leave it. The problem with you fellows here too, now everything doesn't become a favour anymore. It's just we're just going to ask you to do something because you're whānau <laughs> and you can't say no. Um, anyway, uh, we've got our final startup for the evening who are going to come and share their amazing thoughts with you. So a group of incredible founders with experiences that literally have spanned the globe. So the team at Korowai, so Korowai, they will explain the name during their corridor this evening, are embracing a challenge that is faced by millions of people and their pets globally assisting owners and animals with the comforts they need to feel safe, loved, and protected. So whānau mā, please join me in welcoming to the stage our whānau from Korawai. I'm Fiona Taimana, founder of Korawai. I lead the strategy, the marketing, and the operations. Our first product, focuses on dog comfort through personalised owner connectivity. So I was studying at the University of Auckland and that's how I met Sachis and Juan Pablo. They were researching in haptic technologies. Hello, I'm Juan Pablo Porero. I'm an embedded systems research engineer. At Coroway, my role is to develop the hardware and software solutions that are needed to bring this initiative to life. Hi, I'm Sachit. I'm a human computer interaction researcher and I'm completing my PhD at the University of Auckland. I'm a foundation engineer at Korowai. Kia ora, my name is John Taimana. I'm from Korowai and I'm Napui, proud to be from the far north. I look after people and I look after talent. What we're looking to do along with the technology 
is actually inspire Māori youth to get involved in science and technology in this country. We actually want more Māori to come in. We want more Māori to experience what it's like to be part of a global organisation taking our culture and our technology to the world. We want to provide garments for those who deserve care and comfort and they can't access it. Koto, tēnā koto, tēnā koto kato. Ko John Taimana Takuengua, ko Lapui, ko Kaurawa Maki na Iwi, ko Matatua Te Waka. Today we are here to present to you Korowai. During the last six months, we have talked to over 40 dog owners, and a large number of them have given us some concerns. Barry and Suzanne, do not like to leave Tama home alone at night. Alex has problems with Luna when there are fireworks nearby. And Lulu shakes whenever she hops in the car with her humans, Gina and Evan. Now let me introduce you to Cora. COVID has affected our family like everybody else in the world. And my wife, Fiona, decided that we needed a dog to join the family. And she was right. We now understand and are exposed to the anxieties that pet owners have trying to keep their fur babies happy. We are part of a growing trend that has seen pet ownership surge. Research has shown growth of up to 8% in the US and 18% in China. Now, with an aging population, more people living alone, and rising disposable income, pet care market growth across the world has gone through the roof. And dogs account for 44% of that pet care spend. And one in five dogs requires comfort. Now you know the problem, and you're probably thinking, how can we fix this? Well, at Kōrawai, we are developing a lightweight, state-of-the-art tech garment for pets that will give peace of mind to owners. Our solution has three parts. The first part is the garment, tech-enabled, wearable for your dog. The second part is an app connected to the garment via a mobile phone. And the third part is the online community that has experts and other dog owners. We are working with Dr. Elsa Flynn. She has identified areas on the dog that when you touch and stroke, provide comfort. We have developed a prototype harness, which you can see here, that has next level vibrational technology. And through more research and R&D, we found out from our user groups that we need to put on the GPS and heart sensors. Now the garment connects to the app. The app controls frequency, intensity, and the vibrations. And it can be personalized to your dog, size, and breed. And then, our mission is to provide personalized dog comfort through owner connectivity. Now, what's the competition out there? There is lots of it. You've got CBD treats, you've got pheromone collars, you've got dog blankets, and you've got wraps. None of them provide connectivity or comfort for the owner and the animal. The one that sells the most focuses mainly on compression. And our team is myself. I look after people and recruitment with over 20 years in that industry. Fiona, who has over 20 years in marketing and management. And our tech experts, Sachith and Juan Pablo, who are research engineers specializing in human-computer interaction at the University of Auckland. Our goal is to create real-world impact through comfort technology. By the end of this year, we hope to have developed our garment to 
proof of concept, and along with that, we will be doing the app and the community connectivity. Our goal is to be in the market by July 2022, and we are seeking pre-seed funding of $250,000 to take our product to viable proof of concept, minimum viable product. We currently have R&D grant applications in process. We are open to investment. And our Kotawai team are here for anybody that would like to talk with us or we will talk with you. Kia ora for your time and ka kite. Thank you. I was thinking, um, he's a smart man, right? My wife decided we needed a dog, and she was right. Uh, <laughs> very, very smart man, and I, I'm sure she was. Um, so, finally, that brings us to the conclusion of our presentations for this evening. Um, I'm going to share the mic back with Aubrey very, very shortly to kind of wrap up the evening for us. But I guess I want to acknowledge just, if we can, I think they're right next door, um, acknowledgement of our whānau who presented this evening. Um, so, I'm going to ask, hey, Sarah, are they sitting there? The crew? Okay, so, I'm going to open this thing. I'm going to make them come out. This is me going rogue, bro. Because uh, <laughs> I want them to come on out. So, so, I need you fellas to come up on stage. So, put the wine glasses down. Nah. <laughs> not the wine, no, not the alcohol. So, none of that stuff. <laughs> so, I want you fellas to come out. Like, I'm, I'm not joking. <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> Cool. There's more of you, like even the final that didn't present. Fiona, I can see you. Uh, <laughs> so just because you weren't up on stage today, we want to see the rest of you up here too because it's taken a team, it's taken a tribe. Um, plus, this gives Nico a really good photo op. Uh, <laughs> Hey, crew, the hands are getting sore. <laughs> cool. So, hey, I heard they got a song for us too. Hey, but I bet you, I bet you if I leave it silent long enough, you guys will figure a song and you probably have one, but I won't. That's later. Um, but just to acknowledge you all um, for all the efforts, all the hard work, the mahi that we've seen here, but that also we know goes on at home, and also acknowledgement for you to your whānau, um, for all the efforts that they've put in to enable us to all be here together and share this time. Um, so just, yeah, make it to you, fellas. <laughs> and now, I, I don't actually know how to politely ask you to get off stage. Uh, <laughs> so you get off stage now. <laughs> Your dad's famous, <laughs> famous fella. So I'm going to give the stage back to Orbs, who's got a few things to kind of finalise and wrap us up for the evening. Um, and then I think he's got a few things in store for us all to be involved in as well. Hey, kira, kira tato. Um, yeah, so you can sort of see why what we do here, like it's just a really fun job to have to be able to help people develop and, and do what they do. Um, so I'm just really super proud of where the teams have got to from where they started. Um, if you saw them at the start and what their pictures look like, um, <laughs> it's a different story. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Chris, Chris coaches people to get up on a TEDx, <laughs> TEDx stage and actually gives speeches. And so thank you very much, Chris, for your efforts. Um, so I just wanted to share with everyone what, what comes next. Um, so all the teams have... have have stuff to do after program. They'll, you know, they've all got their own individualised journeys. Uh, but what's next for Kōkiri? So every year we try to innovate the program. We try to, we try to um, add, subtract, or multiply um, different aspects of the program, try and make it better. 
we're, we're supposed to be in innovation, so we have to practice what we preach. Um, so this year's not going to be any different. We will we will pour over the data afterwards and try and find out what we can do to make the program even better for next year. Um, we'll be getting around the country to talk to other parts of the startup ecosystem and to see if we can create a more joined up um, communitive community of, of, of you know inside the startup ecosystem. Um, and finally, we're going to be uh, starting a pre-accelerated program for people that have ideas and they want, maybe want to be up on stage one day um, to help them test out their ideas before they commit fully to it. So that's sort of what's next for Corkity. And um, hopefully from that pre-accelerated program, we'll get the next wave of really cool uh, multi-led startups. So uh, keep an eye out on our social pages and on our website. And uh, if you know any people who've got ideas, send them through to the Corkity website. And um, that kind of brings us to the end of, of our night. And I hope you all enjoyed the, the pitch presentations. And we, we've enjoyed having you. And uh te paki paki for one more time for the, for the teams. Uh, out there in uh, digital land or, or here tonight. Uh, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, huri noa, tēnā tātou katoa. And we'll now close with a karakia. Uh, kia tau, kia tātou katoa, te ata whai o tō tātou are ki a iu karaiti. Me te aroha o te atua, me te whikina tahitanga, ki te wairua tapu. Ake, 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 amen. Ok, so, so for the rest of the night, we've got, we've got this place until 8 o'clock. So feel free to finish off all the food, mix and mingle. And um, yeah, talk with the startup teams, please, and, and with each other and get to know each other. And um, at about, yeah, around about 8 o'clock, we need to start packing up because we've got <laughs> classes tomorrow. This is the wānanga, so we, we run in the weekend. So uh, kia ora tātou. Thank you. Thank you.